In 1856, in the Nienda Valley of Prussia, now Germany, limestone cutters discovered the partial skeleton of a thick-boned, brow-ridged hominin in a cave. A German anthropologist named Hermann Schaffhausen examined the bones. Schaffhausen realized that the skull differed from that of modern humans but concluded it could nonetheless belong to what he called a barbarous and savage race of humans. However, his contemporary, Irish geologist William King, disagreed. King noted that the skull of this fossil, with its strong ape-like tendencies, was generically distinct from modern man. In 1863, King declared it a new species, which he named Homo neanderthalensis. One of the most hotly debated topics in the field of ancient history is the disappearance of the Neanderthals. Exactly when, where, and how these ancient humans went extinct is highly contested. Nearly 200 years after Dutch naturalist Philippe Charles Schmerling discovered the first Neanderthal fossil in 1829, we're still trying to piece together the puzzle of our big-headed cousins. Indeed, the subject is more of a controversy in the halls of anthropology than you may imagine. Gibraltar's Neanderthals may have been some of the last members of their species, succumbing to the wave of tech-savvy humans crossing the strait from North Africa. They are thought to have died out around 42,000 years ago, at least 2,000 years after the extinction of the last Neanderthal populations elsewhere in Western Europe. But a study published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences offers new answers, and updates the timeline of when Neanderthals may have vanished from Europe. Given the vastness of the Eurasian landmass, it's highly probable some groups of Neanderthals persisted in remote pockets, missing the memo that their species was destined for extinction. A team of researchers from Belgium, England and Germany collaborated across disciplines and arrived at a surprising hypothesis. Previous scientists had gotten the timeline for Neanderthal extinction wrong. The scientists found that Neanderthals had likely disappeared from northwestern Europe roughly 44,000 years ago, longer than previously thought. Previous radiocarbon dating analysis of Neanderthal remains found in what's known as the Spy Cave in Belgium determined ages as recently as 24,000 years ago. Meanwhile, it's more commonly accepted Neanderthals disappeared sometime around and 40,000 years ago. Spy Cave is one of the most iconic Pleistocene sites, yielding two adult Neanderthal skeletons recovered in the 19th century. The cave is located in Belgium, and is one of the most important sites for human evolution in the European context. This study conducted a new analysis on the Spy Cave Neanderthals, as well as other Neanderthal remains found in Belgium, finding a new disappearance time frame. Extinction, when it comes to Neanderthals, is complicated. While no Neanderthals live today, some scientists don't view their disappearance as a true extinction because they were assimilated into the modern human gene pool. Meanwhile, previous research indicates Neanderthals' use of stone tools likely ended sometime between 39,000 to 41,000 years ago, suggesting an end of a way of life. It's also very likely Neanderthal disappearance happened in waves. Some research suggests there were late surviving or transitional Neanderthals. This team wanted to better assess the timeline of Neanderthals' disappearance from Europe, using fossils found in caves in Belgium. To date, archaeologists have discovered Neanderthal remains in nine caves in Belgium. The Spy Cave has intrigued researchers for the sheer number of Neanderthal remains that it contains. Original excavations conducted in the late 1800s discovered 89 bone fragments of two different Neanderthal individuals, while subsequent investigations have discovered 24 more Neanderthal fossils. The researchers developed a more robust method for dating Neanderthal specimens, using compound-specific radiocarbon analysis. This method isolates a single amino acid, amino acid hydroxyproline, from bone collagen. It's more robust compared to other radiocarbon dating methods because the amino acid is found only in the collagen of mammals. Using this compound-specific technique, researchers retested four Neanderthal specimens in the spy cave, coming up with new dates for each one. Based on these dates, the scientists constructed a statistical model to determine the likelihood of the latest Neanderthal occupation of Belgium. Indeed, 
the researchers found that the Neanderthal specimens were older than previously thought, some up to 10,000 years older. Their statistical model stated there was a very strong probability, 95%, that Neanderthals became extinct in northwestern Europe roughly 40,600 to 44,200 years ago. When redating Paleolithic sites using this so called compound specific radiocarbon analysis approach, scientists have observed that many of the previous radiocarbon dates obtained after less robust pretreatments are inaccurate. This can in turn lead to erroneous interpretations of human and faunal dispersal and rates of change in the archaeological, climatic, and evolutionary record. The researchers suggest the fossil preservation techniques used in the 1800s, which involved applying glue made from animal collagen, could have made it more difficult for subsequent scientists to accurately date these Neanderthal specimens, and lead to inaccurate dates. But using their new method, the scientists in this study were effectively able to decontaminate the fossils, allowing for accurate analysis. Getting the date of these Neanderthal fossils precisely right is crucial to understanding the extinction of Neanderthals, as well as their relationship to the first modern humans. Dating is crucial in archaeology. Without a reliable framework of chronology we can't really be confident in understanding the relationships between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. According to the researchers, previous dates produced on Neanderthal specimens from Spy Cave were inaccurately young by up to 10,000 years, due to the presence of unremoved contamination. Previous radiocarbon dating placed the Spy Cave Neanderthals among the latest surviving Neanderthals in Northwest Europe, with reported dates as young as 23,880 years plus or minus 240 years before present. Thus, the radiocarbon dates on the Neanderthals from Spy Cave demonstrate that they disappeared from Northwest Europe at 44,200 to 40,600 years before present, at 95.4% probability, much earlier than previously suggested. If you're not yet subscribed, please click that big red button now, so you don't miss any of our highly compelling videos. Thank you. But what if some Neanderthal communities in remote reaches of Eurasia lasted longer? In Russia's far north, a lone group of Neanderthals may have been the last of their kind. Near the Arctic Circle, a group of Neanderthals may have persisted for thousands of years after the rest of their species disappeared. In the Siberian north, a group of Neanderthals may have made a last stand, thousands of years after the rest of their lineage had died out but the evidence is controversial. For some 200,000 years, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals coexisted on Earth. But then, around 40,000 years ago, Neanderthals disappeared from the fossil record, never to be seen again. That's when most archaeologists think our evolutionary cousins went extinct, based on exhaustive reviews of radiocarbon dates associated with Neanderthal fossils and artifacts. There's no uncontested evidence for the species persisting past that time. But what if Neanderthals did survive longer? Anthropologists say they found such a case, the site of Bizovaya, in Russia's Ural Mountains in the far north of the country. According to their study, Neanderthals survived there until about 31,000 years ago, 9,000 years after the presumed extinction date. Not only would these hardy few constitute the longest-lasting Neanderthals, they'd also be the farthest north, nearly 700 miles beyond the species' known northern limit. Seclusion could have shielded the group from extinction, at least for a few more millennia, and delayed their discovery by modern-day archaeologists. But other researchers reject this notion and maintain that modern humans, not Neanderthals, inhabited the site. Today, Nearly a decade after the debate unfolded in science, the matter remains unsettled. So let's review the case for Neanderthals' last stand in the far north. About 1,000 miles from Moscow, Bizovaya sits on a river bluff in the foothills of the Ural Mountains, which form the theoretical border between Europe and Asia. At 65 degrees latitude, the site is about 100 miles shy of the Arctic Circle. Beginning in the 1960s, the site has been excavated several times by different research groups. Over the years, archaeologists have unearthed more than 300 stone artifacts and 4,000 animal bones, 
mostly from woolly mammoth. Handcrafted tools and butchered bones prove some kind of humans, a group that includes Neanderthals, were once there, but leave unanswered the mystery of who these people were. The latest investigation produced 33 radiocarbon dates from animal bones found with the artifacts. The new data suggest the finds are 31,400 to 34,600 years old. On its own, that result is exciting, but also agrees with expectations. Other archaeological sites 30,000 to 43,000 years old. The Urals. And a few sites this age or slightly older have been found even farther north, within the Arctic Circle. Most researchers assume Homo sapiens occupied these locales, that only our species had the smarts and technology, like tailored clothing and boots, necessary to survive at such high latitudes. But the new study caused heated debate because of its other more provocative conclusion that the artifacts were made by Neanderthals, the last and northernmost of their kind. The trouble with the claim is that no Neanderthal, or any human, fossils have been found at the site, just stone tools and animal bones. To definitively prove a Neanderthal presence, researchers would need bones bearing Neanderthal DNA. Lacking this, the conclusion comes from analysis of the 313 stone artifacts recovered from the site. Based on comparisons with well-accepted Neanderthal sites in Central and Eastern Europe, the scientists contend the tool types and style of craftsmanship are distinctly Neanderthal. Contemporaneous Homo sapiens in Eurasia didn't make tools like that, they argue. The reasoning may sound flimsy, but archaeologists routinely use artifact style to infer the presence of ancient human species or cultures. Human fossils are really rare. Most sites only have artifacts. For better or worse, artifacts often provide our best guess of who was there at fossil-free sites. Which brings us back to the stalemate over the site. Different researchers, viewing the same material, came to differing conclusions. Another group of stone tool experts thinks the finds more closely resemble artifacts from similarly aged sites in western Russia that have Homo sapiens skeletons. In this view, the site was just another modern human spot. To date, there are still no DNA-bearing human fossils, but ancient genomes have been recovered from other sites, which figure into the debate. There's now DNA data confirming, beyond doubt, the Homo sapiens status of skeletons from two Western Russian sites with artifacts similar to those from the site. This strengthens the case that Homo sapiens occupied Bizovia. Except that the sites are not that close, it is 700 to 1000 miles to the other sites. They are just the sites nearest in both time and space, with fossils as well as similar looking artifacts. And the nearest sites with DNA confirmed Neanderthals are roughly double the distance, far to the south. Therefore, we still don't know which humans left artifacts and butchered animals at the site. They may have been Earth's last Neanderthals or modern humans venturing toward the Arctic. Alternatively, the group could have comprised a mix of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, or even another type of human, such as Denisovans. However, the ultimate question still remains unanswered. What exactly caused Neanderthals to disappear from the face of the Earth? Were they just evolutionary failures, or was it something else? Thanks for watching. Please check out these other videos or join us in the comments section.